Hi everyone, this is Susanna Pagosian and welcome to The Basement Tapes. I really am a curious cat, so this is where we're gonna explore new ideas, talk about any issues, talk about life really, and you know, where your faith takes you. Whether you have faith or you don't have faith, I hope you come here with an open mind and you enjoy this episode. What, do you have a miracle story? I mean, you have many, but do you want to <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah, of course. I think that once I broke into the industry, not that I would, like, I always, look, like, I'm the girl that went to Sunday school. Um, My grandpa is super, super religious. My family's religious, went to church every Sunday. But, like, I think I never understood the way I understand now. Like, it was like a thing I had to do without Mm -hmm. understanding, just knowing that, My family does this. My grandpa says I have to do this, so I'm going to do it. But I never received. Like, Mm -hmm. you have to be open to receiving as well. Yeah. So once I, you know, became styled by Harush and so on and so forth, I started, I would say, not straying away from God, but, like, I feel like I've always felt like this since I was a kid. Like, no matter what circumstance I was in, like, in me, I've always felt... God has a plan for me. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't need anyone to criticize it. God will always place me in the right place at the right time. And I will get like, even just how I became me, like people don't really understand an agency didn't help me. Nobody helped me. Everyone stood against me. I saw everything. Everyone tried to set me up to see my downfall. And yet I will always climb because for whatever reason, God wants me to be in the position that I am. And I feel like I'm one of, I don't know, I don't really see people talking and preaching about God on YouTube that often that have power. I don't see people like talking about it on social media as much as they should because it's just like not the cool thing to do. Mm -mm. If you are given a platform, you need to like spread light, positivity. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime we talk about religion, like, I think, I don't know anyone that's close to me that doesn't get choked up about it. Yeah. It's hard not to. Yeah, because it's, the glory is so powerful. When I started in the industry, I feel like I definitely stopped going to church. I was just out and about, like, living my life, working 24-7. Like an ox. I was, one of my friends, like, says at the bus, she's like, what are you, a donkey? You can't, like, fly from, like, I was literally flying from Indonesia back to L.A., staying for not even 24 hours, flying back, flying to Dubai, flying to Paris. Like, I was, like, ping-ponging all over the world, and not one makeup assistant, like, could keep up with me, so I had to have multiple. They had to meet me at the airport with different luggages, and I just kept going and going and going. And going and going. Because to me, it's like no one's going to outwork me. I don't know why I had that mentality. I feel like I've always just... You've always been really hungry. Yeah. I feel like there's more talented people out there. But at the time, I was like, nobody is going to outwork me because I am determined. I've been given this opportunity and I'm not going to sleep on it. I think that's what would drive me all the time. Like, I have to keep going. I have to keep going. Ignoring like myself completely Your physical body my physical body like I had a pinched nerve at such a young age I dislocated my shoulder from like keeping it up for so long doing client after client after client and I would literally be like it's okay it's okay this is okay it's fine I can keep going I could keep going so on and on and on I continued that way in flights getting sick until I decided to do a plastic surgery procedure where I had a little off time And I wanted a breast reduction and a lift. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why I did that. Like, I I remember... I don't know either. I remember the... Like, it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't that, like, saggy. When you told me, I was very confused, but I just supported you. I know. I think a lot of people were confused because I wanted... Because you were tiny. I was really small. Like, people don't understand how skinny I used to be. You I, you know, you ha- you gave me your Zara shorts, leather shorts. And if you know me, I'm, I'm tiny. Your shorts would fit me. So you were my size at a point. I was a size zero. Yeah. 
and you were I would wear your clothes. Yeah. When we would go out. Yeah. That's I was wild. Like so when you twenty pounds. So when you called me and you're like, "This is what I'm doing," I'm like, I, "That just doesn't make well sense because to me." I felt like my boobs were way too big for my body. I just felt like they were saggy. Like I, I remember a couple people made like comments to me like, "Oh, you look trashy," and I'm like, "But why do I look trashy? I'm so stick skinny." And <laughs> you never look trashy. I know, me. but like on Instagram, I feel like everything <sighs> on Instagram, if you let it get to you, it really will. And I'm not going to um, blame anyone, like, on Instagram. I'm no. going to own it. Like, that was, like, my own issues. I probably had deep-rooted, and I just needed someone to, like, poke me a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? So when I did it, I basically – septic shock is the number one killer in all emergency rooms, if you guys don't know that. Um, basically – that's how a lot of people die, if you look up the statistics for it. I didn't know what was happening because I remember the doctor was telling me, you're fine, you're tripping, no, your thermometer is broken. I was there and you were screaming on top of your lungs yeah. to your mom because then your nurse has left and we were, it was just my your mom and I. And I remember going through all the medication with your nurse friends Um, and they're like, make sure she does this, make sure she does that. And your mom and I, we were just standing there just listening to everything. And when they left, then... All of a sudden, you started to, in agony, like like someone was slaughtering you. And I rushed to Rite Aid to get, I don't know what I needed to get, but I went and you're like, you need this ASAP. So I went and I dropped it off. And I'm, and I'm like, I have to go because I think she just needs you right now. And I'm just an extra person here. And I remember like your temperature was really bad. It was 104. For a few days. And the doctor, I, I even have text messages of it. He said, there's no way that you have a temperature of 104. You'd be halfway dead, which I was. And he kept ignoring it. But you were still eating your hot Cheetos. I don't know how you oh, were doing 100% that. Oh, 100% hot Cheetos. Till All the, the way. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. You know, like that one song when it's at Bury Me. <laughs> Wait, how does that one song no, go? No, 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 no. Um, that when rap I song? Die, Bury me in the Gucci store. Bury me in the Gucci store. Bury me with one hand in a hot Cheeto bags. Yeah. And make sure, like, my two fingers are red from, the, <laughs> from that you, red dye. So you're, I remember you were rushed to uh, um, the hospital. Yeah. So basically what happened is um, after you left, um, I had a nurse come because the doctor was really upsetting me because he kept telling my mom, there's nothing wrong with her. And my mom was just like, I think you're overreacting. Like it's a painful procedure because she's done it too. And she's like, I understand it's a painful yeah. procedure. They cut off like a whole mass of your breast and then restitch it. And they have to stitch like everything back on. You guys don't understand how crazy the scars are. If you have even a doubt about doing that procedure, don't do it. Oh, with any procedure? Yes, of course. And nothing like... One thing I definitely want to say is plastic surgery is an endless cesspool. You are never going to be happy. If you do one thing, it's going to cause you to want to do another thing. You need to find inner happiness and you need to make sure it has nothing to do with like insecurity. That shouldn't be the decision why you're doing something like that. No. Because you have to really understand anytime you lay on that table, anytime anesthesia goes into your veins, you're literally laying your life on the line in the name of beauty. Had you not done that surgery, what do you think, where do you think you would have been now? Oh my God, I think I would have spiraled out of control. Really? Did that? Yeah, because I remember like after that surgery, I was like, I want to do my ears. I'm going <laughs> to do my nose. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. <laughs> Your ears? Yeah, I wanted my ear smaller. I like, wanted... what <laughs> psychopath schedule? <laughs> An ear Look, surgery. One ear of mine is actually a little more out than the other because when I was a baby, like, my ear folded and I slept on it. Yeah. And sometimes I still sleep on, like, a fold. Okay, no, but I one wanted ear is to like literally a dumbo ear. cut apart my ear and make it smaller. Reconstruct your ear. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do next. Mm. But you would have ended up looking like that, um, that one muse. Jocelyn Weinstein. I don't know. That one muse who's a man who looks like a woman. That mm. photographer's muse. That very famous photographer has mm. this muse who man turned into woman or woman that she's done so much plastic surgery. The cat surgery. lady yeah. surgery? Yeah, that's her. I think that's her. Let I me Google. Know, man. I, don't want to say, I hate saying wrong names. Me too. Um, so basically what happened after that is I think that like 
for me, it was just no one was understanding how I was feeling. Apparently, I had seven seizures. And Do I'm, you remember the wounds that they opened on your yeah, legs? Yeah, that's why I got the tattoo. It's the size the of a quarter. Yeah, I have videos of it during the procedures. Because, like, remember Mary? She was, like, filming everything. Because she couldn't believe it, that it was that bad. Wasn't it Mary that sent you to the hospital? Yeah, it was Mary that saved my life. Like, I feel like she's a very special person for me for the rest of my life because I think she was the only one that at the moment when she saw me, she said, she is not okay. And everyone was just listening to the doctor. There was only one other nurse that looked at the paperwork and said, your doctor is a liar. Whatever's on the paperwork that he's written down does not match what I'm seeing in person. You need to immediately go to the hospital. And this is at the recovery center. And if you don't, I'm going to call an ambulance. I can't be responsible for this because you are dying. And I don't think that I understood or grasped what she was saying. And it was me and Celine. And Celine's like, what do you mean? And she's like, she can't close her eyes or go to sleep. Like, she's not going to wake up. And so me and Celine got into my two-seat jaguar. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't need to call an ambulance. But I do think that my disassociation of what was happening is probably what saved my life because I was just like, what? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the whole time, like when they were talking to me, oh god, you need this, you need that, you need blood transfusions, you're rejecting the blood transfusions. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have your people call mine. <laughs> yeah, that was like my whole vibe. And I was actually talking to somebody about this today. I really think it's that I didn't panic. Once I was in the hospital, like everyone was crying and whoever was crying around me. I remember this. I was like, I'm not dying yet. Don't yeah. cry. I, I'll never forget. Like some, a family member was crying over me while I was asleep. <laughs> and she was on the phone with somebody and she's like, Harusha Mernoma, Kanat. I woke up and I'll never forget. Oh my goodness. She brought like kebab. <laughs> And, yet, and I associate that smell to that moment in my life. I don't know why. <laughs> Forever. I mean, you can't make that up. And it's it like was, a TV show. And I remember getting, oh, waking like a... up and throwing the cow up. And it's like, <laughs> Señor, que estoy saliendo. Wow. <laughs> no, it was it, it was a soap opera. When I came by, you're like, hey, you want to watch the show with me? I was like. Is that what we're doing here? Yeah, I'm on episode 20. I'm like, you're binge watching. You're, you were about to die and you're binge watching this show. You're like, it's really good. <laughs> I was like, okay, sure. We won't have a conversation and we'll watch two hours of this and I will go home. I think someone brought like an, oh, I brought you an Olaf poster to oh, like, yeah, cheer and I you up. Oh yeah, put it up on the wall. The whole time, you know, that was up on the wall. Yeah, I was like, I guess I'll take this so she could yeah. smile. You guys it was right next to Jesus. You know that like a choir and a priest came into the room a when choir? I was choir. Yeah, when I was doing really really bad. Oh wow! And the priest prayed over me, and the choir was singing. I have a video of it too. I feel like one day when I'm like fully ready to talk about it, I feel like I still get emotional, and I can't talk about situations to help other people fully when I'm emotional about them. Just, oh yeah. Just because I want to like speak about it subjectively. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, whenever you're ready, I think so far what you've shared today and, and previously on any outlet out there, you are, you've been very helpful. I'm pretty sure a lot of people were considering that surgery and backed out and you probably have saved a few lives or yeah. tragedies. Look, I think it's, I think the plastic surgery world is kind of crazy. Like I've always wanted to do my nose. I think my nose is a little too wide. Sometimes when I smile, I don't like the way it looks. So I was like, I'm going to go to Armenia and get my nose done. I think I told you about it. Mm -hmm. But then I, like, there's moments where I look at my nose and I'm like, it's so cute. It's so me. And, and I just, I haven't yet. Maybe, maybe in the future, maybe never. I feel like one thing about nose jobs that people don't know, you're never going to be happy with it. No. You're never going to really like the shape. No. And then you're going to have like Niagara Falls for the rest of your life. What's that? Like it drips. Like it oh. never stops dripping. Your nose looks fine. I know, but I I did it like a little bit. I don't even know why bit. you even did your nose. I know. Ugh, your, I know. Your no, your natural nose was gorgeous. Very Sophia Loren of you. It was Barbara Streisand. It was not Barbara. No, Streisand. but like just like Barbara, even Barbara's nose. Yeah, she should have had a nose job, but she just she's a star and she did it with that nose. I, know. I don't know why I did half. I I remember when I had my natural nose, people would be like, "You have a botched nose job." Remember that? Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, well, never did my nose. But I just did it lightly on the side, which is like not even that deep of what I did. But my nose still drips. Like people that do this part too, it's mm-hmm. worse. Like they literally mm-hmm. have like a nonstop flow of... I don't know if it's like fluid or boogers. It just, it doesn't stop. I'm not joking. Okay, well, I and won't I think be this getting my people nose People do not talk about this enough. No, it's because, um, look, the game never ends, right? That's what I said. If you start with one thing, you're not going to stop. And there's something like beautiful about like saying this is natural. Like, I feel like I get that like joy out of my eyebrows. Like, this oh, is me. I wish I had a unibrow. <laughs> Girl, I know my have dues to have these eyebrows. Your brows are gorgeous. Thank you. No, I think definitely you're beautiful inside and out. And I think, um, I mean, uh, another thing I want to mention that you were the forefront girl in Glendale specifically that utilized social media starting from like MySpace and Facebook. Okay. No one had the guts to go on Facebook or MySpace, post cool photos, do photo shoots, be artsy and fartsy. Mm-hmm. You were the first one. You inspired this whole look, which, mind you, I am not kidding to you guys. If I could write a history book on beauty in this area, I, I think I should be writing the book along with a few other people. You started this look where Jack the Bulls were kind of new, so you kind of like plumped up your lips a little bit, by yeah. the way. Okay. When Looks I was great. really young. Beautiful, right? Post is on social media. The whole town is talking about your lips. Next thing you know, you're wearing contacts. The whole town is talking about your contacts. Next thing you know, you're contouring your face. Everyone's like, plastic surgery, plastic surgery. It's like, no, it's drag makeup. And then now, I mean, mean, when time goes on, you see that everyone is starting to look the same. Oh my gosh, there's a hoodoosh on my right. There's a hoodoosh on my left in front of me and back of me. And there was a moment where like everyone started to look like you. And I don't know what what that was but even now when i open up social media there are so many girls that look like you i but honestly here i agree with you entertain me i'm not gonna like be like no i never noticed that of course i've noticed that um in the beginning it did creep me out a little bit just because um i didn't really understand what having an influence is right this is facebook days could you imagine i know but i didn't understand what like quote unquote, an influencer is or what a person of influence is. or Because like, I think with me, people talked bad about me, yet they wanted to look like me versus like, you look so beautiful. I want to look like you. And then doing that instead of like, she did her lips. She has so much plastic surgery done when like I didn't. Mm -mm. And then looking like me. So I think like in the beginning, I took it in a way where it's like insulting. And then I learned how to make a profit off of it. Yeah. People started rushing to your door to look like you. So I think after like fully digesting that and understanding like, oh, people just want to be beautiful and feel good about themselves versus like taking in a way of like, why are they saying negative things about me? Yet they look exactly like me. I'll give this much too, where I feel like a lot of girls that are Armenian do have a similar look. So it's easy to like, if you're popping on contacts and doing your lips and doing the same style of makeup, we are all going to look like. Yeah. But so, there's like non-Armenians that look like you. <laughs> now. Yeah. I feel like it's because of Instagram and now it's totally fine. I love it. Like, I love it. Like, I love that the moment I took off my contacts. But can we please just let everyone know that, anymore? can we orig- can we please let everyone know it originated in glendale california oh, the OG. from you from the facebook days but one thing is I, how did you ever handle a lot of people talked ill about you for i don't know for what reason but how did you battle that as a young child like you were you i were was a teenager. really young. i was a teenager having grown women how did you me. handle that? Did I, your mom sit down and tell you like, hey, yeah, ignore it? Yeah, I feel it? like my mom had like a huge part of it and my grandma at the time. Like they were just like, that. you you have to understand certain people are like born with like, in Armenian, like, huh. and yeah. like they would always put like an ochki hulung on me or like pinch my butt every five seconds. Translation. Um, so her grandma and her mom would be like, you were born with like a star charm quality. And so they would put like that evil eye and like pinch her butt just to like, you know, yeah. protect you. And I think people don't really understand like I was heavily bullied as well, like from a young age. 
until I feel like I came into my looks and I started dancing and I feel Mm -hmm. like dancing was my outlet. I professionally danced for a very long time and professionally competed. Mm -hmm. So I think with the dancing, it just, I felt so powerful on stage. And every time I would win, it was like a rush. Like I'm that person, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. But like, it wasn't because of like what I look like. It was because of my talent. Yeah. So I feel like dancing showed me a lot of discipline and confidence. Yeah. And I think what people didn't like and why they kept talking about me, they didn't like how confident I was. And I feel like the more they would talk, they wanted to break me down. But the more confident I grew. Because it's like, why are so many people irked of my existence? Obviously, I'm made, it's so weird. I'm made for greatness. So, so I'm going to keep pissing everybody off. It's weird. Um, I think it's amazing that you just come a very long way. Yeah. And I like how you branched outside of the community. I think you always have had a lot of potential and you're you're living that and there's far more greater things that you're going to be doing. I know that. I feel it. You've always had this weird cool open aura about you every time we hang out every time i'm next to you i feel like you have this channel not everyone could sense it yeah but those who don't sense it and they come for you it's like every time i've stood next to you i've been i've been wanting like i'm that little pit bull where i was like wow 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 <laughs> and i was just like i would handle your money i would handle your lunch i would handle your business someone like said something i was like please let me let me say something please let me say something you're like oh, no not this one but i just i just don't understand like just why can't be, people be nice and sweet i think it's just a reflection and a projection of their own i was always very overprotective of you, you. i don't know why i feel like all my really good friends are very overprotective of me and they're ready to like i would always make sure that you were fed and then whenever you would leave the studio i was like here's your wallet here's your phone here's your kids your massages at in 10 minutes sweetie yeah i'm gonna i would hold your hand and walk you across the street like who does that Oh, I love you. That's why you're my little pelo. Yeah, yeah, I just, I would, I wanted to nurture you. I really did. Yeah. And I felt like I was hired to nurture you. I was like... I think you were like a very important key player in like my growth and my career. Thank you. I, I hope I was. You were. Because you brought in a lot of positive energy in a very negative environment. Even when I saw things from the behind the scenes when we weren't working together, there was any information, I would call you immediately and I would be like, girl, go get your money because yeah. I'm seeing what's happening out here and you have room to wiggle. Yeah. But why would like the craziest situation? Like I didn't even apply for that job. Yeah. I didn't even want that position. Yeah. And I'm sitting there in front of a computer. And I'm looking at everything and I was like, I need to call her right now because I just found out something and she's going to she needs to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. There's Tell me like- that's not God. It is God, and I feel like the magic of God is he places the right people in your life for every reason, and there's always, like, it's like almost like a circle dance. You always come together, like, if people were meant to be in your life, they help you and you help them in times when you never thought you even needed help. No. Because God hears conversations in rooms that mm-hmm. you don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there would be times where I would call you up. I'm like, you know, this and this and this is happening. Please don't go into that room. And you're like, what? Yeah. And we hadn't been talking for months. Yeah. It's like the weirdest thing between you and I. Yeah. And I don't even need to see you for years and that's fine. Yeah. But the moment I feel something, I'm like, I need to call her and tell her. I know. That's I feel weird. like I have that relationship with a couple people. And just like, I feel something for you, how I call you up and always i'm i've been very for very it. i feel like a disciplinary figure the ufc in your life. fight over here you're it, dana white <laughs> because i've seen so much potential like i remember you saying like why are you so hard on me and it's like because you just need discipline you have so much potential yeah finally i'm kind of growing up i'm so proud of you like walking in here was like a very nice feeling for me to see you, you like flourish and Become who you were always meant to be. Thank you. My priest, my deadhead, my father, Vosgan, he is the one that looked into my eyes and he's like, you need to do this. And I was like, why me? I have nothing to say. 
But you are so entertaining. Like, you're one oh. of the funniest and nicest people I've ever oh met. Oh, my gosh. Thanks. Celine was like, when's this coming out? I was like, um, soon. It's in production. She's like, you're one of the most entertaining, interesting people know, out there. I was Selena, like, I'm not that you interesting. You are, though. Me and Celine always say that. And by the way, you guys, Celine's like my right hand to Styled by Harouche. Operations. She's, yeah. COO. And now we're like pinky in the brain. <laughs> we really are. She's pinky. <laughs> clearly. She's, I feel like she's the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Physically, she's pinky. She's like so tiny. I know. She's Me and Celine like, used to share clothes. <laughs> I <laughs> believe other, it. I believe day. it. She's like, remember when we used to share clothes and how fun that was? I was like, um, yeah, But don't I don't know anyone me. tinier than her. Is she like um legally like petite? Is there like a legal She's petite, but she has curves. Like she does. Yeah, she doesn't, you, I don't, I've never noticed them. Baby got back. <laughs> she does. She has a nice body. She's hey, she's how tall is she? Like five? No, five two. Anyways, listen. I just want to like see every time I see her. I just want to like pick her up with one of my hands. Just, I know, little friend, little friend. <laughs> little, That's oh, her nickname. We call her little friend. That's how um, the YouTube. Hello, my, my friends, friends, my, my little, little YouTube little friends. friends. It's oh. not little little. It's my little YouTube friends. That's how the little friend thing came about because I was like so nervous and just staring at her. I'm like, little friend. <laughs> One last story before we go. Poor little friend. So, so Haruch has had the same group of friends since like middle school. Um, no, elementary school. Oh, elementary. And um, they always um, take little friend and they, they sacrifice. They, <laughs> <laughs> they grab her by like the arms and the hands and the legs and they like swing her right and left. And, like, she loves it. <laughs> And they go, sacrifice, sacrifice, <laughs> near, near a fire pit. And it's like, they're about to roast Celine like a little lamb. No, oh, so she good. loves it. We have so many videos of us like <laughs> carrying her. I don't know why we do that and where that started from. Because <laughs> no one is little like her. I know. I'm sure if I was light, they would probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just no one can carry me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Male oh, or female? Big friend, big friend. <laughs> Little friend, big friend. Wow. Thank you so much for coming. Um, you were, you're honest. I was so excited to have you here. Oh, and I really, I think, yeah. And I really, I mean, someone asked me um, on my episode, like, so what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'm like, I really, 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 really want my own channel on SiriusXM. I really, really, really believe in God's name that you will. Thank you. And by then you'll be like on like Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Well, thank you. Um, any last words, like a sentence, a phrase? I just feel like we were all over in this conversation. and It's okay. This is going to be a three-part series. I'm crying. Like lifetime. A lifetime series. Um, I mean, I'm so proud of you. I feel like I'm going to make it like personally about you. Oh, no. You guys should listen to this. She's an amazing person. And you're going to get nothing but like positive conversations and you're going to laugh or you're going to get random information. <laughs> I do have ADHD. She really does. Probably untested. I mean, I've diagnosed myself too. Don't worry about it. I, I feel know, like anyone has, talented like has something like that. That's why their mind works the way it does. And it, it's, it's okay. You just need to learn how to control it. Discipline yourself. That's yes, it. Discipline. It's all discipline. Everything is discipline. And um, I definitely think you are going to blow up and I can't wait to watch you. Thank you. You'll be right next to me. Oh, yeah. Pelonita for life. Pelonita Foundation coming soon to you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what we should work on together. Um, just giving back to the world. Oh, I would love that. You will. No, if we just raise money and just like donate it all. I know. You will. Okay. Well, thank you again for tuning in and uh, see you guys next week. Adios. Adios, muchachos. Well, adios. <laughs>